De regreso aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network and uh, immediately we're going to switch to English because we're going to talk to Lee Jordan. He's a commercial uh, pilot and uh, he obviously knows a lot about safety both uh, on land and on air and he has uh, written a new book about safety, teens, text driving and all those kind of things. How are you, Lee? I am wonderful, Javier. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you very much. So um, this is a, a, a big problem, I guess, happening uh, everywhere around the world. But uh, here in the States, uh, it's uh, pretty evident that um, teens, texting, cars, speed, it's uh, not a good combination, huh? Well, you know, they call this a borderline epidemic. And I would go farther than that. I would say that this is a full-fledged epidemic. You know when you drive down the highway, if the car in front of you or the car beside you is texting or driving just by the way they're swerving. I mean, it's just like watching a drunk driver, and it's only a matter of time, if you're close to them, that they might sideswipe you or you might have some kind of impact with them. It's a very scary situation out there, and it's just not teens that are doing it. It's also adults. Yeah. I have to say, here in Florida, I'm living in Miami, and in Florida, we don't have too many rules uh, to prevent that. Actually, they pass a rule that is very soft. I mean, it has to be a secondary violation. So you have to do something else in order for them to give you a ticket if you're texting and driving. So I guess first laws have to be imposed everywhere and be more strict, I guess. But then also it, it, it begins with everybody, right? Oh, I agree 100%. It, it begins with our children. It begins with teaching our children what is right and what is wrong. I mean, obviously, everybody teaches their children to be polite, you know, to eat all your vegetables. As they get a little older, we teach them don't do drugs. We teach them what to do in school, how to get along. But we don't really talk to our younger kids about texting and driving. So I got this idea for a picture book about texting and driving for younger kids. And that's basically what has brought me to you today. Excellent. And uh, so, what? Uh, what? Uh, there, I think there was a particular instance that uh, that brought you, to, that inspired you to do the book. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, it was really kind of interesting. I live in Dallas, Texas, and in Dallas, you get your driver's permit when you're 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, and all you do is you show up and you give them your birth certificate and you answer a couple of real simple questions, and then you go out the door and you've got your your certificate. You, you're good to drive with a qualified driver. So my daughter, my daughter and I, we get her new new certificate. She's never driven one minute in her life. Wow! We get back in the car. Yeah, we get back in the car. Except for lessons. Except for lessons, I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. No, no, literally, she's never she doesn't have a license. This is her permit, which allows her to learn to drive with me. So yeah. She's never actually driven one minute. Yeah, I know. So we get back in the car, and she takes her cell phone and puts it between her knees. And I'm looking over at her, and I said, Montana, that's her name, what are you doing? She says, oh, don't worry, Dad, I have my phone on vibrate. I know not to read the text, but I need to see who sent them. And wow. I'm like, are you kidding me? And they, uh, uh, Lee, let me ask you, when I, obviously she went through driving lessons, I guess, at, at her school. They don't start teaching that at that level? No, it doesn't work like that here. You can, in, in Texas, You can just go with your parents, and it's not, you, you take a, a simple, it's like 10 questions long, very simple test, and you prove that you're 15, and you can let your parents teach you how to Oh, I see, so I that's see. That's what we were doing. Oh, yes, okay. They give you your permit, and then a year later, when you're 16, you get your license. But your permit allows you to drive with a licensed driver over 21, and that's what started this. So I watch her do this when she's 15, And, you know, kids today, they text instead of communicating. They, everybody can text from the time they're seven or eight, they're starting to text. So she's an expert texter, but you cannot drive and text. And she thought she could. Yeah, and so I started to think about that. Yeah, absolutely. You're right about the, the teenagers more inclined to text than... Uh, than make phone calls uh, because I was actually in uh, in Houston, Texas a week ago for the Shell Echo Marathon and this is a contest in which uh, high school and uh, college students build the most efficient car possible and uh, they only they not only teach them about doing the cars and all that but they also teach them about uh, human skills like public uh, social skills and uh, one of those things believe it or not it's making phone calls instead of texting people because uh, they they think the texting part is like uh, the most normal way of communication oh i i agree 100 
it, it really, if you watch kids today, and, and I'm a father, but I'm just a regular guy. I mean, I, I've raised my three kids the best I can. I don't know, you won't find out the later if you did a good job, you know, that kind of thing. But <laughs> um, when you, yeah, really, when you have, you see four kids at a table and all four of them are on their cell phones texting and they're not communicating, I just think that's tragic. Yeah, yeah. And um, Lee, I think this is going to be bad, but I'm going to say it anyway because I don't know, especially here in Florida, as I said, we don't have that many rules and everybody does it. Everybody, not teenagers, adults, everybody. And I don't know if people are learning to do it. I mean, I know it's 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 bad, but I don't know if we're developing that skill too, which is will never be safe 100% doing it. But um, do you have any opinion on that? Oh, no, I agree with exactly what you're saying. Unfortunately, technology, technology today leads our lives. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has one or two computers. Everybody gets direct TV. We want information fast, and we like to sit on a bus, and we don't look out the windows anymore. Everybody's on their phone looking down. Yeah. And because technology is so pervasive in our lives, we have to deal with the consequences of the of technology taking over what we always did before, which was to communicate with people. Just, you know, if you get on a bus, bus today or 10 years ago, you might have talked to the guy next to you. You get on the bus today now and everybody's looking down at their cell phone. Yeah, or headphones. And then uh, there's like a... Or headphones. The first That's block in... The headphones on. Yeah, the first blocking element of, uh, of communication, of communicating for other people. So, uh, Lee, let's talk a little bit about the book, please. I think it's a title, One Creepy Street, Annika's Broom. Like, talk a little bit about that, please. Oh, thank you. The name of the book is One Creepy Street, Annika's Broom, and it's a very simple premise. It is a children's picture book told in rhyme, and the premise is that a 13-year-old witch gets a brand new broom for her birthday, and the first thing she does is text when she flies it. And she loses control of a broom, and she crash lands at a place called One Creepy Street. And the rhyme is, you never know whom you might meet when you crash land on a place called One Creepy Street. Huh. So she has to get her broom fixed. She has to deal with all these unusual characters who are mostly just very lighthearted and humorous. The whole book is, is very lighthearted because it's four children, and, and she's got to get back home. So that is what the book revolves around. It's a very simple concept with a very direct message. Listen, if you text and drive, you're going to have to deal with the consequences from that action. Yeah. And uh, so this book is saying for uh, kids age uh, what? Like uh, when they start reading, I guess? Yeah, really, it's, there's two completely set, different set of demographics the graphics that it's for, Javier. It is for anybody that likes picture books, which is four, five, six, seven, eight, and up. And it's also for someone like my daughter, who's 15 going on 16. You know, we are the parents, Javier. We control when they get the keys. So if, I would really like if parents, before they gave these teenagers the keys, and I understand no teenager ever wants to read a picture book, but the parents have the control of the keys. If the parents would say, you know what, before I give you the keys for the first time, when you get your driver's license, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna take seven or eight minutes, and I'm gonna read you this book, and I'm gonna try and press upon you through the consequences of what happened to Anisha, what might happen to you if you decide to text and drive. Yeah, and probably that's more effective than other techniques that I, I, I don't know exactly what's uh, the term, and uh, I apologize for that, but I think it's like shock uh, impression psychology or something like that, when they show like pictures of horrible crashes and people dead and all that, and that, oh, yeah. some people think that that works, but this is another approach of, of, of giving the same message, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a two-fold approach. It's an approach where, you know what, I'm reinforcing some words with pictures that you might remember that are slightly humorous, and I'm starting the lesson at a younger age. There are no books out there like this, and, and quite, quite frankly, I've had wonderful response to this, just like you're saying, because this book needs to be out there. We're starting to tell our kids with this book about texting and driving in the second, third, fourth grade. Yeah. which is a, a teenage issue, but we need to bring it down because technology is clear across their, their lives. They're yeah. getting their cell phones, they're getting iPads in third grade. Yeah, we're, yeah, we were talking with Lee Jordan, the author of One Creepy Street, Annika's Broom, and uh, Lee, unfortunately, uh, radio time is uh, very limited here, and we have only one minute. One question I wanted to ask you, I mean, we're rushing here against 
time with technology again because uh, car manufacturers are developing new technologies and maybe by the time that the kids are going to read your book by the time they drive this technology is going to be uh, replaced by something else more hopefully safer oh I, i agree with you 100 i have no idea how long this will be an important factor but what i do know is that it has been an important factor building to the states that it's at for five six years and the way kids are today with texting Or with, you know, we're not just talking about texting, Javier. You can be looking down at your cell phone looking for the next song you want to play. Yeah. You can be looking, you can be surfing the net. You can be looking for somebody you want to call. Yeah, and just one... Same thing. Yeah, and just one second, uh, it, it like create a whole thing. Uh, Lee, again, like, uh, please uh, tell us where can audience can look for your book. Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, One Creepy Street, Annika's Broom. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again, and um, let's uh, let's hope that your uh, daughter uh, learned the lesson already, <laughs> and, like uh, and starts uh, starts and starts passing it along to, to the rest of her friends and family. Thank you so much for having me, Javier. And we will do the same here with audience. We're going to post a link to your uh, the Amazon page and everything else. Okay. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bueno, ya regresamos aquí en Auto 060, vamos a hablar con Kia y la iniciativa que tienen para mostrar lo que están haciendo con el Mundial de Fútbol en Brasil 2014. Yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Auto 060. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.